Tom, I think you may be muted. We are still not still not hearing. At least I'm not. Okay, try one more time. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, I want to thank, uh, thank you, uh, Tony, for this opportunity to be here today, and certainly we are honored uh, to be part of the President's Interagency Task Force as we seek at USDA to strengthen our efforts together in combating human trafficking. Certainly want to thank the President and Vice President for their leadership and uh, to acknowledge the extraordinary work of my colleagues on the Cabinet as have been outlined here today, especially that of the uh, State Department. I'd like to highlight two ways in which we at USDA are involved in this whole of government mission to put an end to this devastating trafficking of persons. First, USDA is incredibly proud to be partnering with the US Citizenship and Immigration Services to help encourage eligible individuals to naturalize and become US citizens. You know, immigrants are a vital part of the fabric of this country, and for USDA, they play a very important role in the food supply chain. We also know that victims are less likely to go to the police if they are undocumented. That's why citizenship is so incredibly important. USDA's national programs connect with communities in both rural and urban environments and present a unique opportunity to reach many more immigrant communities, inviting them to fully participate in civic life as new U.S. citizens. In 2021, we launched pilot projects uh, to help the uh, U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services better connect with agricultural workers in four key regions around the country, uh, in the Imperial Valley in California, the Rio Grande Valley in Texas, Central Florida, and in Central Pennsylvania. And we're looking to expand significantly that effort in counties uh, across the United States in 2022. Additionally, USDA is providing four deliverables as part of the overall U.S. strategy for addressing the root causes of migration in Central America, uh, focusing on economic uh, insecurity and inequality. As part of this strategy, we are building resilience to address climate change and food insecurity, in particular, by increasing the number of communities and farmers served in Guatemala specifically. We're fostering a business enabling environment for inclusive agricultural growth through the Cochrane Fellowship Program for Guatemala, El Salvador, and Honduras. We're enhancing workforce development, health and education services, notably through an extension and expansion of the USDA McGovern Dole School Feeding Program. This $45 million investment will increase the number of communities and school children served via these programs in Guatemala and Honduras, and indirectly impacting the flow of migration by providing school meals and literacy education that reduces food insecurity. And we're enhancing school-based agricultural education and youth extension in Guatemala, helping to meet food needs through USDA's International Agriculture Education Fellowship Program. So I'm pleased to share our shared commitment across all federal departments to do our part, along with uh, our fellow colleagues. It, it will take all of us, Tony, as you well know, in working together to address the deep systemic and underlying causes that lead to the tragic occurrences of human trafficking in our country and transnationally. Thank you for the opportunity to participate today. Tom, thank you very much. And, and I think, you know, as we're hearing uh, from uh, from colleagues and as Tom just underscored, it is, uh, I think, increasingly evident why this has to be and, and is, thankfully, a whole of government effort, because there are so many uh, different angles to uh, to this and to dealing with trafficking effectively that really do call on the particular competencies and, uh, and expertise that virtually all of our agencies and departments bring to bear on this. And we're hearing that, I think, very vividly uh, this afternoon. So thank you, Tom.